Vincent van Gogh painted seven different versions of his sunflowers, four originals and three copies, and one of the originals has been destroyed at the end of World War II. Some consider these paintings to be among the greatest masterpieces ever painted. Others may think that they are relatively simple paintings. But it was far from simple according to Van Gogh's own words in a letter to his brother. Each work takes the energy and concentration of a person's whole being. In fact, it was a result of years of practice to find the right color contrasts and combinations, the best rhythm for his brush strokes, and the inspiration of an upcoming visit of a painter he admired, Paul Gauguin. But more on that in a little bit. Let's first have a look at what the paintings are showing. From Van Gogh's point of view, they were intended as a decoration. In a letter to his colleague Emile Bernard, he described them as a decoration in which the raw and broken chrome yellow will blaze forth on various backgrounds, blues between pale emerald green and royal blue, framed within thin strips painted in mine orange. He painted the four original versions in August 1888 in Arles, in the south of France, a village where he had just moved from the metropole of Paris. The sunflower paintings would have to decorate the rule of Paul Gauguin, who would be visiting him later that year. As the sunflowers were fading during the process, he had to work quickly, and he finished all four works in a single week. When Van Gogh put his mind to something, he worked ferociously to achieve his goal, and in this light we can understand why this process completely consumed him. The first version has three sunflowers, the second one has six of them, and the last two versions show even more sunflowers. And while Van Gogh was in a great mood when he painted these works, the sunflowers are not all happily blooming. In fact, it shows sunflowers in different stages of their life cycle. Let's have a closer look at the fourth version, which is arguably the most famous one. The bud in the lower left corner has yet to reach full flower. Seven flowers are in full bloom, and the other seven have lost their petals and are turning to seed, or dying as you want. Six sunflowers only have their flower head left, and the sunflower on the top right only has a single petal on it. This is an indication that they are at the end of their life. However, this should not really be interpreted as having a hidden meaning. Van Gogh actually saw sunflowers as a symbol of gratitude. But more than that, Van Gogh worked with the sunflowers he had to his availability, and they only lasted for a week. His biggest concern was how the different colors could provide contrasts and create harmony at the same time. More about that later, but first let's look why he decided to paint his iconic sunflowers. In February 1888, Vincent van Gogh left Paris to Arles in the south of France. It was his dream that he could invite other artists there to live and work together to ultimately form an artist community. In the end, there would be one friend who accepted his invitation, Paul Gauguin. They knew each other from Paris and they loved each other's work. Gauguin and Van Gogh had exchanged some works in Paris, something that was not that uncommon among aspiring artists. In this case, one painting of Gauguin was changed for two works of Van Gogh. Van Gogh got this work from Gauguin, entitled On the Banks of the River of Martinique and Gauguin had chosen two early works with sunflowers. I'll let you be the judge on who came best out of this exchange. The paintings Gauguin received both showed two cut sunflowers. Gauguin liked them so much that he put them above his bed in his place in Paris. He would actually hold on to them until 1890, when he sold his possessions to finance his trip to Polynesia. But back to 1888, when Van Gogh knew that Gauguin would visit him later that year in Arles. 
to provide a warm welcome, he wanted to decorate a house for his friend. They would live in the yellow house which Van Gogh captured here in a letter to his brother, and it is much better visible in this painting he made of it. Gauguin's favorite color was yellow, and he loved Van Gogh's earlier sunflowers, so the choice for some new decorations was made easily. Sunflowers, again, with lots of yellow. This time he painted several different versions of sunflowers in a vase. It was the first step in the decoration of the house which actually would occupy Van Gogh for the months to come and included many other of his famous works including his starry night over the Rhone, the night cafe, his portrait of the local postman and the red vineyard, the only painting he would actually sell during his life. So when Gauguin finally arrived, in October of 1888, the house was filled with new artworks. During their time together, Gauguin actually made a painting of Van Gogh painting the sunflowers. This was in December, four months after Van Gogh painted his first series. So Gauguin did not actually observe Van Gogh painting these sunflowers, it came from his imagination. Like many other works by Gauguin that came mostly from his imagination. And Van Gogh also painted this portrait of Gauguin during their time together. Gauguin would stay for about two months before the tension between the two of them became too high. According to Gauguin's account, Van Gogh threatened Gauguin with a razor blade. But it is more likely that Van Gogh suffered a mental breakdown and mutilated his own ear which we know from his famous self-portraits with a bandaged ear. Van Gogh painted some sunflowers before his famous series. However, they are not the colorful ones in a vase. There were some cut sunflowers gone to seed. Here are the two versions that ended up with Paul Gauguin. And this is a study for one of those paintings. The last one in this series is the one with four cut sunflowers painted at life size and filling the entire canvas. Van Gogh saw these flower paintings as a practice on how to use and combine different colors, something that he was constantly searching for. One thing Van Gogh was looking for in this painting was the combination of warm and cold colors. The colors had to provide a contrast to each other, but at the same time create harmony, a very fine balance and something that he has started to achieve more and more in his later paintings. And perhaps it is the secret to the success of his later sunflower paintings. Another thing to notice in these early works of cut sunflowers are the patterned brush strokes. This was another part of Van Gogh's technique that he was constantly experimenting with. Same direction, opposite direction, straight, swirling, mixing it up. It's the element that makes the starry night so famous, those swirling clouds. Colors and patterns of brush strokes both fascinated Van Gogh and you can see how he experimented with them in his self-portraits as well. When we compare the works in the original series of four sunflowers in a vase, you may notice that some are signed and others are not. More precisely, the first two versions, the one with three and six sunflowers, are not signed. But the last two works in this series with 12 and 15 sunflowers are signed. Not with Van Gogh, as we may expect, but with Vincent. The reason was that his surname was hard to pronounce for many people and Van Gogh was happy enough with these works that he wanted to send them to an exhibition after Gauguin's visit, something he would actually do in the middle of 1889. And if people would like them and talk about him, it would be better if they just called him Vincent and not some strange pronunciation of his surname. Nowadays, Vincent is famous enough to be known under different pronunciations. It doesn't really matter if we say Van Gogh, Van Gogh, or Van Gogh. Most people will know who we are talking about.
Anyway, the first version of Three Sunflowers is in a private collection today. The second one also ended up in a private collection in Japan, but was destroyed during the air raids on Japan at the end of World War II. Luckily, the other versions are on display in museums around the world. This version was the third one he painted in 1888. It has 12 sunflowers and it is now in the Neue Pinakothek in Munich. Together with the fourth version, which is now in the National Gallery in London, these two works would decorate the guest room in which Gauguin stayed in Arles. And despite their fight at the end of Gauguin's stay, he would still love the sunflower paintings, so much so that he would later ask Van Gogh to gift him one of those works, but that was one bridge too far for Van Gogh who kept them for himself. The three versions he painted in early 1889 are based on the ones he painted several months before. So this is the original for the third phase of sunflowers he painted, which is now in the National Gallery. And here are two versions from 1889. The first one is in the Sompo Japan Museum of Art, the other one in the Van Gogh Museum. All have the same composition, but they are not exact replicas, meaning that Van Gogh deliberately made some alternative choices for each of the copies. Each version has some unique elements ranging from the colors to the amount of detail in some flowers. The version in the Van Gogh Museum, for example, has even more intense yellows than the original version, clearly visible in the background, which also meant that the colors for the flowers are more intense to provide an appropriate contrast. And while any book on art and color theory would have told Van Gogh that these color combinations would not be a good idea, Van Gogh pulled it off, and if you have the chance to see one of these works in the museum, you will notice that these paintings truly beam off the walls as soon as you enter the room, no matter what paintings are surrounding it. In 1889, Van Gogh also painted another copy, this time a copy of the fourth phase of sunflowers, for which the original from 1888 is in the Neue Pinakothek, and the copy from 1889 in the Philadelphia Museum of Art. Again, a very similar composition, but with some differences in the colors, which you can see particularly in the vase, the background, and the center of the flowers. I am curious to hear in the comments if you have any favorite among his seven sunflower paintings. Well, I hope you enjoyed this discussion of Van Gogh's sunflower paintings. If you did, please hit the thumbs up button to support the channel and subscribe and hit the notification bell to be alerted when new art videos are released. And if you want to learn more about Van Gogh's work, you may enjoy a video about Van Gogh's favorite painting, which he painted for his nephew, or his painting of irises in the Getty Museum, or his starry night over the Rhone, which he painted just after his first series of sunflowers. And finally, I love to read your thoughts about Van Gogh's sunflowers in the comment section down below. Thanks for watching.